On a cold winter morning in Patterson, New Jersey, a group of the opioid response team gathers in one of the city's most drug plague areas. There's about 30% of all overdose calls are for a repeat victim. 2% of the city's area basically being impacted by 20, over around a quarter, right, of all overdoses. Funded with a $600,000 grant in September of 2021, the program aims to combat Patterson's narcotics problem with a proactive approach. How we do this is we go with the, a triad of people, law enforcement, uh, emergency medical care, which is our, us, our emergency medical responders, uh, and a social worker. We're trying to build that trust model that, that people just don't have of somebody in uniform, right? And that's, speaking of that, uniforms, we don't wear uniforms. The opioid response team has now grown to about 30 police officers and EMS workers, plus the social workers and seven community partners working five days a week, including nights where most illicit activities take place. From September 1st to literally two days ago, um, we had 1,200 individuals interacted with, right, actually met on the street, actually talked to, but only 60 referrals facilitated, right, which means we either took the car that'll take people down to treatment over at St. Joe's or for, for them to get a written referral, right, to say, look, these are the best places where you can go get treatment. Those that interact with addicts on a daily basis know that saving at least one life is a major accomplishment. As far as overdose types, we, we went to, I think it was roughly 5,000. We deployed Narcan roughly 800 times. A year. Last year. Last year. That's people that are on the verge and of, of death. Most of them survived, but Fire Chief McDermott says a few did not make it. We're so densely populated. Mayor Andres Saya telling us that with a population that is 65% Latino and 25% African American, people of color have been adversely impacted by this opioid epidemic and that poverty plays a major factor. And that's why we're focused on the resources through financial empowerment and if individuals have been incarcerated and recently released, reintegration services. As the highest authority of yes, Patterson sure. that you are, do you believe that you're doing everything in your power to eradicate this crisis? We in Patterson are striving to do more for those with less. City officials here in Patterson saying that they have one thing very clear, and that is that they don't want Patterson to be a drug destination. However, they do say that the biggest challenge they face is service resistance by those who need it. I used to be a part of the problem. Something that Ronald Joseph knows very well. Now I'm the part of the solution. He was also an addict. I was out here in the corner giving it to the people. People like us, ORT, Tier 1, and everybody that's around here doing positive things to the neighborhood, that's what we need, a big, to make noise, and that's why we're here right now. Director of Health and Human Services for the city of Patterson, Joel Ramirez, says the opioid response team was created to humanize the opioid epidemic, but that the work doesn't stop here. We really believe that if individuals are sheltered properly, then they will seek the help and they will stay on the path to sobriety. Uh, we have put in to receive Narcam in my department, the Department of Health and the Police Department, and we are working on the policy with our legal department to start distributing to the community, as well as to provide training on how to use it effectively. So we know it saves lives, we have the data, uh, and we want to get it to the community as soon as possible.